In this video, we're going to use a couple of tools available in Jump to compare two groups. So public relations, media, and marketing companies all use graphs to draw attention to their services. Do people actually give more credence to a service or product if its description is accompanied by a graph? So there was a recent experiment to test this. Participants were split randomly into two groups. One group read a short generic text about the effectiveness of a drug, and the other read the same text but accompanied by a basic bar graph. The bar graph just mirrored the text. It didn't provide any new information. Afterwards, participants rated their perceived effectiveness of the drug on a nine-point scale, so one meaning not effective at all, nine being very effective. And I'm going to start off by calculating some summaries using Analyze Tabulate. So I'm going to the top menu up here, Analyze Tabulate. And I usually like to put my response variable in the drop zone for columns, so I'm going to take Rating and put that there. So the default is to show the sum. Um, that's not really very useful, just showing the sum of all the ratings. So let's instead look at the mean of those ratings. So I can take the mean and put it on top of the word sum and let go, and that'll replace it. So that's what I want to do. Um, but let's say I want to compare the mean and the median. I don't want to put it on top because I don't want to replace it. Um, I have a couple different options. I can put it kind of to the side and it'll drop it there. Another thing if you want to add things to your table, like let's add in standard deviation, is you can just put it on top of the other numbers. I feel like this is a little bit easier because if it's on the side, you have to drop it in just the right place. So I'm adding the standard deviation. Also the interquartile range. It's not abbreviated IQR, but that's what it is. So now I have measures of center, the mean and the median, and also spread, the standard deviation and the IQR. And I'm going to break this down by groups. So I want the text only and the text and graph groups to be shown separately. So I'm going to take group and drag it over here to the left where it used to say drop zone for rows. And now I have separate measures of center and spread for my two groups. So that's the table that you see here. I forgot to add in. That's just the sample size. Um, so you can see I've got um, 30 people in the text and graph group, 31 people in the text only group and then I have these numerical summaries. So just to sort of summarize what's here about the centers, um, on average, people in the text and graph group, that's like our treatment group, people in the text and graph group rated the drug as more effective. So we want to make sure that we um, say on average, because obviously this may not be true for every single person, it probably isn't a perfect split, um, but whether you look at the mean or the median, um, it does seem like seeing the graph made people think the drug was more effective on average. As far as comparing the spread, it's a little bit more ambiguous. So um, we can see that the standard deviation is bigger in the text only group. So how do we interpret the standard deviation? The standard deviation is the typical distance from the mean. So the typical distance of a rating from the mean, and here we're talking about from um, the group mean, so we've got our two separate groups. The typical distance of a rating from the group mean is larger in the text only group. So it seems like if you only had text, the effectiveness ratings are a little bit more spread out, or at least spread out from the mean. Um, the two groups do have the same IQR, so the interpretation of that is that the range of the middle 50% the range of the middle 50% of ratings, that's our interpretation of the IQR, is the same in the two groups. So there are a few different ways to um, display quantitative data using graphs. One of them is a box plot. So a box plot is just a graphical representation of the five number summary. So you can think of the box plot as having like five points on it. The lower whisker represents the minimum. The left edge of the box, this is Q1. The middle of the box, the middle line, is the median. The top edge of the box is Q3. And then the right whisker is the maximum. And basically this is dividing up your data into quarters. So we have 25% of the data in each of these sections. Um, we don't know how the data are distributed within that range. Um, but it does give us some idea of what the distribution looks like. To create this graph and jump, I'm going to use the graph builder. So I'm going to do graph at the top menu and graph builder. I want those horizontal box plots, so I'm going to put rating on the x-axis. And then I can go up here at the menu and choose box plot. 
Notice when I do it like this that the middle line is missing. So basically what that means is that the median must be right on top of either Q1 or Q3, and that's why we can't see it. So um, one way to sort of solve that problem and jump is I'm going to take these points and drag them on the box plot. Um, and now I can see exactly where the points are falling. It's still actually hard to tell where the median is. I'm going to click the box for the five number summary. Okay, so the median is actually the same as Q3 in this data set. Um, so that's why you can't see the median in the middle of the box. Um, then I'm going to break these two groups. So I have my text only and my text and graph group separate. Um, and I can see this in the box plot. If I want to get rid of the dots now, I can just click this button and they'll go away. Parallel box plots are a really nice way um, to compare two data sets kind of at a glance. Um, especially if you have large sample sizes or if your sample sizes are very different from each other, um, box plots can make it easy to compare. Another way to display quantitative data is with a histogram. So with a histogram, you just start off by dividing up the axis, the quantitative axis, into bins. So in this particular histogram, the bin size is just equal to 1. Um, but that's not necessarily how you would want to do it, especially if you had a scale with um, tons of discrete values, you would probably want to group some of them together. And then in a histogram, the height of the bar is representing the count or the percent in each bin, depending on how you set it up. Um, so like these that are really small on the left-hand side, 2, 3, and 4 in the text only, um, that's only one person being represented by those sort of flat bars. Um, whereas this one, if you kind of go up by the same amount, this would represent four people who gave it a rating of five. Um, and you can see the most common rating for text and graph was six. The most common rating for text only was seven. So histograms can give you a little bit more of a granular look at the distribution, especially if your bin size is pretty small. And it's very easy to get this in the Jump Graph Builder. You just click the button here for histogram. Notice that with histograms, we don't have the option for the five number summary anymore. Instead, it's means and standard deviations. I don't really like how it's oriented, though. Um, it, I would imagine that it would be the top graph is on the top, um, but it doesn't seem like it. I think text and graph is that top number, 6.3. Um, text only is the lower number, 6.129 but it does make sense that the box plots go with the five number summary um, since those are the values that are really highlighted when you make a box plot.